Sean, have you got a mascot? Well, yeah, I've got something that I think we're all uh, experiencing this time of year. We all got bought books for Christmas. I got some books I was very happy with. This is one of my favourite ones, which is I Would. It's a definitive guide to erotic wood knots. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god! This Sherwood Beauty. What's that one called? That's Spruce in Autumn. <laughs> no, no, take that. That's helped me uh, get to sleep many nights. Uh, wow, and of thanks. course, my favourite, which is Oxfordshire Willow. And it's a lovely book. <laughs> and it gets you to appreciate that nature is a bit of a slut. <laughs> the other book I was very pleased with which is a great book, which is the Loose Women Script Collection. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got, it's got all the classic episodes on it. They, they stand the test of time. Mm. <laughs> this, just, this is uh, cystitis. This is when they're one of the ladies. <laughs> I know I can't do all the different voices, but it's just all the ladies chatting. OK. Have you ever had cystitis? <laughs> God, yes. Ouch. Yes, I think I caught it from a damp towel. You can't. You can. No. <laughs> You can't! You can! Just buy your flannels! <laughs> Toilet seats? Ad break. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a great comfort in those cold winter months leading to the spring. <laughs> it's not often we ask for something and you actually get what you want. Yeah. <laughs> so, you must have been a very good boy this year. Yeah. <laughs> Sean, have you brought a mascot? Uh, well, yes, Jimmy. I think I'd, I'd revisit something very popular of mine, which is the uh, gritty limericks. I think we're all well aware that uh, I based, I've revived the limerick in its original form, which is a piece of social commentary. It's a way of dealing with some quite sensitive issues in a light-hearted, fun way. You know? <laughs> and I've uh, got a few here. This one is something that I think upset a lot of people, which is the whales that got washed up um, on beaches here. There once was a beach in Skeggy where a whale was on its last leggy. <laughs> it was dampened by hose and pecked at by crows. But still, it ended up deady. <laughs> <laughs> this one's about an issue that's uh, obviously in the news a lot. Only the other day was uh, ob obesity amongst children. Our kids, they're all getting fatter from eating food that's covered in batter. With too many pies and no exercise, they'll collapse face down in a meat platter. <laughs> And, uh, you know, something we've all got to deal with. Um, <laughs> OK, this one. It was a troubling start to the year for celebrities who are no longer here. With tears in our eyes, they were falling like flies. But sadly, no one from Top Gear. <laughs> yeah. Rock, have you got a mascot? Uh, no, Jimmy, I don't. But, um, you know, we've played a lot of games of Countdown. I've been playing it for a while now. And just accidentally... I've, uh, I've invented a new form of sort of literature, poetry. <laughs> and the idea is it's very short stories using the A to Z, so each word is a consecutive letter of the alphabet. Yeah. For example... <sighs> Alpacas <laughs> buy chips during Easter... <laughs> ..for good health. <laughs> In July, <laughs> Kit Kats. <laughs> <laughs> Llamas... Mostly nibble oranges, particularly quickly. <laughs> Rabbits, snuffle, truffles, unaware vultures will X-ray your zombies. <laughs> Here's another one. I'm very proud of this one. A bear cub daily eats five gorillas. <laughs> However, in July, kippers look more nutritious. <laughs> Once, Pauline Quirk reputedly said... Tickle adders, vibrate wattles, explode your zip. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, have you got a mascot? Of course I have, Jimmy. When have I ever let you down? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I said to my, uh, one of my kids, they were asking me for a word, I said, look it up in the dictionary. And she went, you must be joking. And I, and I thought about it, she's right, dictionaries, they're just intimidating, they're too big, there's too much stuff in them. So I thought I would make a dictionary you know, slim it down a bit. And the uh, first thing I thought, we'll get rid of some of the longer words. <laughs> you know, no one uses long, arcane words, you know, like, um, you know, recalcitrant. <laughs> no one uses that, do they? No. Happiness. <laughs> <laughs> That's gone. <laughs> Holiday. 
<laughs> the last time you said, said I was going on a holiday? It. We don't need it. Out. Passport, sunstroke, paella. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> But the other thing I realise about dictionaries is not only are they uh, are they too big, they're also boring. Yes. Oh, oh what, what word am I looking for? I don't know. Um, think of a word. Uh, abacus. Abacus. Yeah. So abacus. You go. <laughs> a, it's easy, isn't it? A B. You're there. You're in. You know. So what I've done, I've created Sean Locke's difficult dictionary. <laughs> you know, it's tough. It's hard. It's nine ninety nine. <laughs> this dictionary is so difficult. I guarantee you'll never use it. <laughs> that's from Alan Shearer. He had a go on it. <laughs> he really struggled. <laughs> so what I do is, rather than um, you find the word from the first letter of the word, you find it from the fourth. <laughs> so countdown will be under... N. C O U N. Very good, N. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Susie, that's your go. You've had your go now. <laughs> <laughs> so, unsuitable. John. Uh, you. No, because the first letter is the same as the fourth, so then we go to the fifth letter. <laughs> <laughs> so it'd come under so, I. Oh, yeah. Jimmy, I'll go on for you. Rabbits. At B? No, you idiot. It's a plural, isn't it? It comes under S. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got rid of all the three letter words. You know, Who was using you, them? Well, if you, if you need a dictionary to understand what, uh, how to spell a three letter word like hat, you want to look under P for help. <laughs> <laughs> This has been leading to that joke, basically. <laughs> <laughs> um, croissant. Anyone croissant? Anyone? I for croissant. No, it's under E for baked goods. <laughs> <laughs> Biscuits. Anyone? S. <laughs> e for baked goods again. Yeah. But baked goods is a plural. Eh? Baked goods is a plural, so it should be on Well, the I knew I was fucking bumping to you. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, there we go. I'm more intrigued and... by the fact you thought we didn't need the word passport anymore, but you've kept abacus. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. I haven't. There's actually literally nothing in here. <laughs> <laughs> sure luck, everyone. <laughs> Sean, have you got a mascot? No, I haven't got any mascot, Jimmy, but I've, I've got something that I've reprieved. Um, something... Uh, the the, the clamour for more of these has become overwhelming for my uh, gritty limericks. Oh. Since I pointed out that the limerick was originally written as a sort of topical, uh, sort of social comment, really, so then they became sort of uh, like light-hearted, saucy, postcard-type jokes. And um, I'd like to read a few of my gritty limericks for you now, if I may. Yeah. And this first one is basically about the breakup of the nuclear family and the uh, profound impact it has on one or both parents. <laughs> there was a divorced dad from Kent to whom at the weekend his children were lent. They all went to the zoo. He said, it's your mum, not you. And into the lion's cage he went. <laughs> very, very sad. I think we can all agree. <laughs> um, this next uh, limerick deals with one of the recent evils of modern Britain, a growing industry of misery, the payday lender. <clears throat> <clears throat> there was a single mum from Onga. <laughs> <laughs> I can finish. Who <laughs> <laughs> for money relied upon Wonga. The cash she spent at 4,000%, and now a home she has no longer. 